Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering 5th Grade Math. Here, finally, we're going to get a lot of real practice with multiplying fractions times fractions. Now, we've had a little bit of exposure with this already because we already know that when we multiply by whole numbers, we write the whole number as a fraction, and then we proceed. Here, we're going to be actually multiplying fractions times fractions. But you'll notice a lot of similarities. So what if you have 1 half times 1 third? All right, you do exactly what we said before. You do not need a common denominator in order to multiply fractions together. All you do is you multiply the numerators, 1 times 1, and you multiply the denominators, 2 times 3. All right, so at the end of the day, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6. And you look at this and say, can I simplify this anymore? And I cannot because I cannot divide top and bottom by something to make it any simpler. So multiplying fractions is actually easier than adding them, in my opinion. If you have 1 fourth and you multiply by 1 third, then you look at that. You do not need a common denominator here. You just multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 3 is 12. You check and see, can I divide top and bottom by something to simplify it? And I can't. So I just circle the answer. All right, next we multiply the fraction 2 sevenths times 1 third. Again, you don't care if the denominators are the same. You multiply the numerators. You also multiply the denominators, right? And 2 times 1 is 2. 7 times 3 is 21. And you try to simplify that, but you cannot divide top and bottom by anything to make that any simpler, so that's the final answer. Just getting some additional practice here. What if I have 5 sevenths times 3 fourths? Well, first thing I do is I don't care about the denominators or anything. I just multiply the tops, getting me 15. 5 times 3 is 15. 7 times 4 is 28. And I look at this and I say, can I divide anything there and simplify that? And I can't. 15, 28 is as, as far as it goes. If I divide by 3 up here and 3 down here, it's not going to divide evenly and below and so on. All right. And then finally, if I have something like 3 tenths, times 1 seventh, then I just proceed as usual. I multiply the tops 3 times 1. I multiply the bottoms 10 times 7. And so on the top, 3 times 1 is 3. On the bottom, 10 times 7 is 70. And I try to divide top and bottom and simplify that and see if I can do that. And I cannot actually simplify that anymore. So I'm done just as it sits. For the final problem, let's say we have 2 elevenths and we're multiplying by 2 fifths. So again, I don't care about denominators when I multiply fractions. So on the top, 2 times 2. And on the bottom, 11 times 5. And so on the top, 2 times 2 gives me 4. And on the bottom, 11 times 5, if you think about your multiplication tables, is 55. And I try to look at that and see if I can divide top and bottom by something, simplify it, and I really can't. So I just basically stop right there, and I'm finished with the problem. So in this lesson, we're just learning how to multiply fractions together. It's a very simple process. You don't have to worry about common denominators or any of the things that we had to deal with with adding fractions involving the denominator. They just do not matter for multiplying fractions or dividing fractions. All right. So that's what we've been doing here. Now, in all of these problems, we've gotten answers here that are already simplified. We always want to check and see if the answers need to be simplified further. In this case, we didn't need to do anything because the answers were already simplified. In the next section, we'll get to some problems where we do need to simplify the results, and we'll get that 